to use dissatisfaction towards your favor, deadlines are a must. See, with creativity, what often happens is that it's easy to be like, okay, I just need to be this free spirit, and the more free that I am, the better that my art will be. That's true to a certain extent, but a creative genius that is not capable of systematizing their creativity will eventually go mad. Therefore, it's important to instill rules. And the more that you instill rules, ironically, the more creative that you become. And not only do you become creative, you also become a professional. Therefore, whatever sort of creative vehicle that you're in, it's highly important to incorporate deadlines into the mix. Let's say you're someone that creates Skillshare classes. If you decide on creating one class a month, stick by it. And within that one month, around the publishing time period, when perfectionism is sneaking up on you, that's when you can be like, look, I don't make the rules. Actually, wait, I do make the rules. And guess what? I also enforce the rules as well. It doesn't matter if I'm feeling all this dissatisfied energy. What I did was I created a deadline and I must abide by it. Each time that you follow your deadline, each time you're getting that dissatisfied energy and you're channeling it back into your future art. If you're someone who finds it very difficult to follow a deadline, another thing that you can do is get an accountability buddy. I think about someone who's out of shape. If they're out of shape, then most likely they're going to the gym. And if they're going to the gym, a lot of them are going to get a coach. The coach's job is to get this out of shape individual and hold them accountable. Simply having this coach instills discipline into this individual. Likewise, if you know another content creator, then you can pair up with this person and hold yourselves accountable. Make sure you inform each other of your guys' deadlines and make sure that you guys enforce them. And here's the thing. A lot of the times, it could be accountability buddies. So for my brand, I run this daily email list and this email list has been growing. And thus far, I have been writing every single day on this email list for hundreds and hundreds of days. My ego is invested. Anytime I don't feel like writing, anytime I feel unworthy, anytime I'm struggling with imposter syndrome, I remind myself, hey, you have a deadline to follow. And not only do you have a deadline to follow, there's plenty of people from all around the world who have gotten accustomed to you writing every single day. Are you going to uh, let these people down? Of course not. You are going to overcome perfectionism and publish anyways. We've talked about using dissatisfaction towards your favor. The way that you're going to use dissatisfaction towards your favor is by creating deadlines. If you cannot enforce your own deadlines, then get an accountability buddy. Other than that, one of the things that we need to understand in regards to perfectionism is the evolution versus revolution mindset. See, a lot of perfectionists, they have this revolution mindset where they think that this piece is going to be the haymaker that automatically changes their career. Now granted, for a lot of artists, that's exactly what happens. It's this one haymaker a piece that they created that influenced the rest of their career. But if you're looking at most artists out there, what they have is the evolution mindset. They keep making these little tweaks over time. And the more that they keep making these tiny little tweaks over a long period of time, the more that they build their body of work. The more that they build their body of work, the more that they realize that it was never quantity versus quality. It was more so quantity leads to quality. So have the evolution mindset. Always be in that little tweaking mindset. And if you're tweaking, what it does is that it allows you to focus on the bigger picture. And the more that you focus on the bigger picture, the more that you view each piece that you publish as a rep. And once you start to view it as reps, 
that's when you realize that quantity is eventually leading to quality. The bonus tip is to embarrass yourself and do it willingly. Now here's the thing, you don't just want to embarrass yourself for the sake of embarrassing yourself. You want to embarrass yourself in a certain way where it allows you to grow. So allow me to give you an example. I run this YouTube channel and on this YouTube channel, I normally film in my studio. There were a couple of times where I decided to film outdoors. And each time I filmed outdoors, something weird would happen. One time I was filming outdoors and this elderly lady comes to me and she's like, what are you, some kind of celebrity? And I tell her, no, I'm just filming a YouTube video. And she literally just pulls up a chair and she begins watching me as I'm filming. I was feeling highly uncomfortable, yet I got through the video anyways. As I was recording, there were a couple of times where I fumbled and she smiled when I fumbled. Despite me making the mistake, despite me embarrassing myself, I published that video anyways. Once I published it and I willingly embarrassed myself, I realized that this whole idea of embarrassing yourself, during the moment it stings, but later on it becomes comedy. Often, a perfectionist find it difficult to embarrass themselves. If they even feel like that they're going to embarrass themselves, then they will do their best to circumnavigate it. So if you find certain moments in your life where you can willingly do something that goes beyond your comfort zone, then you will help yourself in regards to your art. Obviously, try to find certain embarrassing tasks that align with your goals uh, because I run a YouTube channel, therefore filming in an embarrassing circumstances aligns under my goals. You too need to find something similar and the more that you do it, the more that you will melt away perfectionism.